हे बघा कालचा हे नको व्हायला टर्न गुड मॉर्निंग हॅलो गुड मॉर्निंग एव्हरी वन आय सुशील गायकवाड फ्रॉम मेकॅनिकल इंजिनिअरिंग डिपार्टमेंट डी वाय पी आय एम आर वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस डे टू सेशन थ्री ऑफ एफ डी पी टुडे वी हॅव अ व्हेरी स्पेशल स्पीकर विथ अस मिस्टर बालाजी रेड्डी आय टेल आय जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस आर स्पीकर टू यू ऑल मिस्टर बालाजी रेड्डी हॅज ग्रॅज्युएटेड फ्रॉम गव्हर्नमेंट कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग पुणे विथ अ डिग्री इन इलेक्ट्रिकल डिसिप्लिन इन नाईन्टीन नाईन्टी टू He completed his uh, post graduate diploma in quality management in 1996 and was amongst the uh, was first amongst 34 of the enrolled students at that time. He later on completed his MS in quality management from Bits Pilani. He has more than 17 years of experience in industry from be, uh, being a production and maintenance engineer in the beginning uh, of his career uh, to retiring as a general manager. He has a keen interest in Deming philosophy and in 2001 he was instrumental in bringing Dr Henry Henry Neve to deliver a series of lectures on the Deming philosophy in India which was the first ever by a Deming master in the world In February 2018 he was felicitated by National Center for Quality Management which is NCQM for 20 years of quality in India In May 2018 he was the first Indian to be made an honorary member of the Deming Alliance UK Now we have a lot to tell about this speaker but uh, instead of listening to me I uh, suggest you all listen to uh, our speaker of the day Mr Balaji S Reddy and uh, without any further delay without any further ado I would like to request our speaker Mr Balaji Reddy to begin with the session sir I hand over the mic to you now thank you that was very very kind uh, uh, I get always get embarrassed during this introduction not uh, used to someone else talking about me in fact you and I don't talk about myself like this but uh, i think that is the call of the day but let's just begin right up so when i was contacted by uh dy patel and they said that we need to uh, have a session we are doing something a faculty development program on industry 4.0 right and uh, i mean then i started going backwards and saying what is industry 1.0 and 2.0 and 3.0 that's how it all began industrialization and so on and so forth i don't want to get into the history of it but industry 4.0 uh, there is a divided opinion on this are we staring at it or are we in, are we in it right so i believe that we are staring at it we are uh, we not right into it but we can't really say because it's just a matter of time before you know it strikes us in the face uh, i remember way back in um, 1995 all right i think i don't know if some of you may have been around the what but uh, microsoft launched what is called as windows 95 okay and bill gates was very very focused on windows 95 he believed in having an operating system to control literally uh, the computer industry in the whole world and you know he did that but for a brief moment during that he got so involved in the operating system he didn't see the growth of the internet uh not that he could not predict it he wrote a book called the road ahead in uh, 1996 this is after he became the richest man in the world okay at that time yeah when you know when you become successful then you can write books so he wrote that book and it's a fantastic book even today when i read it much of the things that he uh discussed and wrote in that book are coming true today he said that there will be a streaming video service instead of physical videos there would be a multiple of devices on which people will access information so he was right on many many counts okay but he did not see the power of net at that time he was he was focused too much on the operating system the reason being that uh, he thought that at that time voice and uh, data especially and for those who were part of that that particular generation my generation we were introduced to the internet via a uh, dial up and we used to use an extra telephone connection it remember for those who could not could not get an extra connection because you had to apply for one and it took months to get a connection right we had to wait in queue and so we had to use our telephone lines to connect to the internet 
and then if someone tried calling them then the line would be busy and so on and so forth we didn't have mobile phones in those days all right so um this this is this is how the whole thing began and so he he thought that since copper wires were being used to transmit voice in the data this what was required for the internet he thought that at that time you would need something as well what we today megabytes and gigabytes of data but that in mean, was still like the first modem was 14.4 kbps and that was the fastest and because he thought that that was that was the case he did not focus on the internet what he didn't realize was that where it took 17 days for a person to send a letter from uh, india to england i know i was i was writing and trying to learn an approach in those days from a gentleman in england his name was just mentioned dr henry nee and i used to write a letter in days on time was around a month before i learned so as compared to 15 days or 17 days or 30 days if it even if it took 30 minutes to send a document it was worth the wait i don't remember in those days sending a 40 kilobyte file or a 100 kilobyte file used to take around 7 8 maybe 12 minutes depending on the speed at that time and if it it was raining or some weather conditions it would be even worse what i'm trying to tell you is that i just mentioned we are staring at it but that doesn't mean we need to ignore it someone of the caliber of bill gates ignored it and he took his eye off the ball and he was focusing a lot on operating systems and at that time somebody else jumped in right you had uh, netscape that came in okay they created navigator the uh, the browser which was the default browser and then you had sun microsystems headed by scott mcneely who came up with uh, java and and so on and so forth right and they stole the march on him and they thought that you know and they became the de facto standard and what i didn't like was what they did after that because they started making horrible statements like because when bill gates decided to get back at the internet approach because they became the de facto standard he had to approach scott mcneely and scott mcneely publicly said this on a forum that it feels so good to see bill gates begging at your doorstep Well, I want to ask the audience today: Does Scott McNeil even exist today? He doesn't exist. That's what Bill Gates does to you, right? He just took it away. But he was big enough to do that. So I'm saying here we are staring at it, but that doesn't mean that we should ignore it. It's here. Industry 4.0 is here to stay. It will take a long time before it becomes a part of our day-to-day -day lives. Okay? I mean, we are all engineers. We know that um, in Industry 4.0, the, the gadgets. we literally begin sharing information with one another almost instantaneously yes but they need to be programmed to do so so try to understand okay now uh, they are machines and yes we are talking about artificial intelligence and machine learning but i still would like to go by alan turing's uh, statement okay where for those who have seen the movie based on his life the imitation game where he made a statement he was he was being questioned in he was arrested and he was being questioned in the jail by one of the wardens there that can a machine think and he said like a human never but at its own level yes and that's what artificial intelligence is we need to build that in right machine learning yes but intelligence is what you do when you don't know what to do which means if you're programmed to do something you do it anyway and you need to know what is to be done right but human intelligence obviously would go to another level because there's one thing that humans can do which which machines can't and that is dream and imagine so till that happens uh, until there's some algorithm for dreaming and imagining i don't think uh, machines will be able to reach that and obviously you also need bandwidth and things like this which we are seeing here is coming in as 5g so that's yet to uh, be rolled out and reach a certain uh, level of proficiency before we can actually say this all right so um, what uh, i'd like to begin with that in today's world right we need a different way of looking keeping at things industry 4.0 is going to make us look at things differently 
and even organizations will need to be managed differently because if you're saying that equipment is going to be intelligent enough but then we need to check all that we need to see whether the intelligence is good we need to fix our processes first before making it to that level of automation and intelligence that the machines and the the uh, all the gadgets start talking to each other and taking their own decisions right because you can't take the right decision without the right information and i just made a statement that intelligence means doing something when you don't know what to do what to do when you don't know what to do and the human is capable of doing that because we imagine all right that how we can relate we can create abstract mental models very quickly and make comparisons and take our own decisions which i don't think machines have been able to do up until now not at least the rate at which we can okay and in our dream we can come up with something i mean we learned this in school that the benzene model that came out it came out from a dream this man had right when he was the chemist he was sleeping and he had a dream that the snake had bitten its own tail and was going round and round and that's how he created the benzene model so these are things that the machine cannot do so we need to manage things differently and we need to get ready for a different way of managing and my focus in today's talk is basically that all right now in managing in today's turbulent times and in the sense not just what we are going through right now but where people are there's going to be not one company but there are a host of companies working together we need to look at things differently right and this this model which i'm going to share with you people have built upon it and given it their own name but i'm going to use it the way it was okay today it's been given a term i'll begin with this this is a gentleman by the name w edwards deming um well for those who don't know about him the man who was responsible for catalyzing uh, japan's turnaround after world war 2 we all know japan was completely destroyed and then they came back like a phoenix rose from the ashes but uh, he and dr juran they were responsible for this uh, without taking any direct claim on that right but deming landed there before juran and he was uh, he gave them ideas and he gave them a way to think and that's why later on almost 30 years after what he did in japan when he was rediscovered in his own country and he started trying to teach the americans what he was teaching in japan they would never understand him and uh, he was he was he was puzzled he said i'm trying to tell the americans what exactly i told the japanese and how is it that they are not able to grasp what what i was trying to say because they wanted a step 1 step 2 step 3 kind of thing and he was not willing to a uh, method he wanted to give you a way to think and then you devise your own methods because uh, after all everyone is different okay every every situation is different the same thing that people are talking about in our country right now okay that how is it that we have opened up while our cases are rising well our approach was different it was very different from the the european countries or both the americas north america south america who had who were into the whole damn thing when they had to announce lockdowns whereas we did something smart we announced the lockdown earlier on and created what are called as containment and non containment zones all right that was the purpose of the lock- lockdown so that we could manage these differently and that's why the cases now are rising because we are focusing on the containment zones when we are carrying out testing and obviously there the number of cases will be high but that's a different point here what i'm trying to say is you need to have a different way of thinking and you can't copy uh, what somebody else has done so and in today's industry 4.0 definitely things are going to be different as people approach its implementation all right so what w edwards deming did in japan was phenomenal right but when he started trying to teach that to the americans he they, they just couldn't grasp it and he himself got puzzled and then it suddenly struck him as to what exactly the japanese had picked up from him and then he put that all together he said that they are looking at these four major sciences okay and he called it as a system of profound knowledge now i just like to take you to uh, the slide presentation here right just give me a minute and i'll start that up okay so when we get there to the slide we'll see here the system of profound knowledge here we can see here now oh 
this word profound knowledge it sounds very pompous it's not i would say that he would he was looking at a word deep knowledge okay as uh, some is saying widespread yes i would look at it as very very widespread in the sense that good enough for you these are the major things you need to know when you're managing organizations in today's uh, dynamic times all right where things are changing all the time and you need to think and not only that there's something else which has happened today it's not one company against another it's a group of com- companies or a family of companies against another family of companies i'm using the word against but deming was against against right and he said that it can never be we always we all need to work together and we'll see what he was trying to say here all right now what exactly is the system of profound knowledge he uh distilled the whole learning that the japanese picked up all right um so and brought it down to four interconnected sciences these seem distinct they seem different that's why it says here the two words which are coming in right so one is different but the other one is important interconnected okay so these are deeply interconnected sciences right where uh, which he identified he never invented any of these but he identified and what are these now i'll begin with my understanding of this when i read his books and they're quite cryptic to read his books okay he doesn't lay um he wants you and it's so difficult to read his books okay because they're like the bhagavad gita every time you read them you, you find some new meaning and that's exactly what this is uh, the two books that he wrote one was called out of the crisis the other is called the new economics spell system of profound knowledge was outlined in the new economics and i'll start my understanding of this before i go to what he said because it sounds a little abstract because he expected people to understand right first one is that today we are living and we are surrounded by integrated dynamic systems okay these are important both the words the systems yes we all know but integrated which means um they're deeply interconnected right they're the we're talking about dynamic okay and this integration happens despite the fact that there could be physical distance like right now this entire uh webinar we are using this word webinar because it's a seminar on the web some people recently objected to the use of this term but well that's how the english language is is progressing but we are all physically apart i mean there's someone sitting at in breaching chord there's someone sitting um here i am in in near pune university someone is sitting in thule nasik i don't know where from all over the state maybe all over the country but we are all connected we are integrated in a very different way and that's the beauty of technology similarly companies today don't operate in isolation okay i mean today people are trying to say make bold statements like let's forget about china let's move away not possible right now because um, most of the work is coming from there and it will take some time to move away and when we move away from there we will be dealing with companies in different parts of the world but we need to connect them so understand that there has to be something connecting all of them and that's the integrated but dynamic uh dynamic means well each one grows by themselves right so we need these these companies separate but they are changing with time all the time so first is we are surrounded by integrated dynamic systems second is people are the most important part of a system okay and we are talking about systems which are i am of course this theme is industry 4.0 you can take these words as any way people matter or people matter like we say black matter gray matter this is people to matter but also people matter people are important right and he often said this in fact my my boss uh, who's no more in this world but he taught me a lot uh his name mr rv ramachandran he used to be the cm and md of kirloska cummins once upon a time right and then he later on became director of international quality at cummins engines usa i, I had the good fortune of working under him and i remember once um 
on on a on a sunday we used to have our weekly off on sundays he called me to the factory and when he took me inside the factory i was wondering what what he brought me here for he took me inside and made me sit we took two stools and we sat in the middle of the factory and then he asked me so do you do you do you see anything i said i just see nobody here and i hear nothing at all obviously i was wondering what he was what he was doing he said he said you don't hear anything right i said yes sir. you know why i said so there's no one that's the point he said and then he made a statement which has stuck with me he said there is a lot you can do with no money and a lot of people but there is nothing you can do with a lot of money and no people you need people all right those people may be geographically apart as we are saying today or we have to be together of course we are basically social so we need to be with each other so no matter what this work from home and all that okay yes it's temporary it sounds quite good very convenient but eventually we need to be with each other to get the work done and that i think will happen and is slowly happening and we getting back to normal so i said all of us are are facing this right so people matter third is that as engineers we get lost into the number game which is well we all know that we need to need to convert something into some that we can explain to someone i mean if i say the temperature is high or low i need a number to tell someone it's it's, it's a way of expressing myself yes but that doesn't mean that where there are no numbers right we don't do anything about it okay the great albert einstein once said that all that can be counted does not really count and all that really counts can't be counted so trying to convert everything into numbers is 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 unnecessary and that myth is there if you can measure it you can manage it not necessarily there are 10000 things in this world which you cannot measure but you must manage most of us are faculties here we know you can measure the attendance in a class but you can ne- never measure attentivity but you must manage it and we all know how tough that is right you can't measure it but you must manage you gauge it you can sense it so that's good enough as long as it lets you know that you're going in the right direction okay and that's what he said here numbers yes but numbers meaning the numbers always have a context try to find out the context in which the numbers were created understand the system and then take decisions and of course the fourth part is called epistemology now some of you who may know this great but this is the sense of learning and and he said that most knowledge is based on what we call as tacit and explicit all right tacit is inbuilt we have it but we don't know that we have it. it's not that we don't want to share it and that comes from the fact that our imagination and how we how we use what we learn okay and what we read and what we see and he said for that each one is different okay for example um let's take the case here, okay that um if if uh, if anybody here okay i've been to this place called las vegas and if you not uh, been or seen big photos of las vegas or even if i say i've been to harvard now i'll tell you okay my <clears throat> daughter been she, she's studying in boston which is very close to harvard and one uh, saturday uh, afternoon she went for a walk there and then uh, she was outside of harvard and then she she phoned up and she said dad i'm standing outside harvard and i said how does it look she said do you, you know when you took me to pune university the campus i was so impressed right so in front of me the picture came of pune university and she said but this is uh, 10 times that so you start multiplying that image in your head that's called the way you can do that is called your asset knowledge and then you can relate this to something you already know so there's one part but the second part is explicit that you should be able to express it and explain it to someone now he says this science of learning is there in everyone but we need to study it all right so he says if you know these four sciences <clears throat> you'll be able to manage anything that you see in front of you because you will see things differently all right and so towards the end of his life when he used to give his programs okay he lived till the age of 93 and he was working till 10 days before he died uh he often started his program by seeing that by saying this he said i am not here to teach you anything new but i'm here to make you see things that you normally would not see so uh, at the end of today's session i hope i would have attained that okay 
um, that you would be seeing things differently because this is a very different way of looking at things and we are we are at the cusp of something very different where sometimes we may be involved in decision making sometimes we have to create systems for decision making right so let's go ahead with this right the four sciences here integrated dynamic systems people matter numbers with meaning and epistemology his words now these were my understanding from what i read in his books here is a picture that explains this quite differently now that integrated dynamic systems he called it as appreciation for a system now if i were to tell you this if i were to show you this as a slide appreciation for a system you would never grasp what this man was trying to say well i appreciate the fact that everything is holistic and systemic and nothing happens in isolation that's what he meant okay second one the people matter thing that is his understanding psychology now if i were to say understand psychology you know, half of the people over here in the audience would just turn their face away and say what absolute nonsense i'm not here i'm an engineer no what he meant was something else and we'll come to that as i take you through this presentation the third bit okay where he said numbers with meaning that's understanding variation that is you got to see the numbers not in isolation but in a systemic manner in a holistic manner i'll give an example here okay right now when our covid-19 uh, tests are being carried out and then every day there are websites that are reporting the number of cases that have the number of uh, people testing positive and they say it's going up it's going up it's rising yeah sure but that's just a bar graph you're looking at right if i were to calculate the percentage of people testing positive well that's pretty constant and i can tell you this because i am doing this i am analyzing all of this and i'm sending reports to the government of india all right and the percentage of people testing positive has not gone up above 5.1% right from the beginning till now all right the maximum it has touched is 5.2% for example just yesterday okay we're talking about uh, overall we have some 42 lakhs etc 44 lakhs now i think it has touched 43 lakhs 44 lakh people tested and you have around 2 lakh 20000 people testing positive for 2 lakh 30000 well a quick mathematics will tell you 2 lakh 30 out of 44 is not even it's just a little over 5% all right so if you're looking at absolute numbers definitely but we need to understand the system of numbers i think now you're getting the point i'm trying to make here right and for that you need that fourth science there what is called as what he called as theory of knowledge so i'll take you through all these now the four sciences here are shown in four rectangles this is a symbolic diagram because he said no one science is more important than the other and they are all interconnected through double edged arrows you can see that there right which means that no one science exists in isolation as far as profound knowledge is concerned all of these work together and when you look at everything around you through this these four sciences you will see things differently and when you see things differently you will gather different information you will ask different questions when you ask different questions you will get different answers when you get different answers you will take different decisions and when you take different decisions you'll get different results you want to take different decisions and get different results you need to think differently this is a science profound knowledge is a science and it's a combination of sciences and that's the beauty about this because he said no one science can help you all the four it's and you need not be a master of this just good enough good enough for you to know so anything around you when you start looking at through these four sciences you will ask different questions i'm very sure many of you sitting in the audience right now will start questioning the media now because they all that they are doing is reporting cases but nobody is telling us the percentage of the cases on a day to day basis and that is pretty constant it has not changed much at all right and uh, the more we test definitely the more Uh, positive cases and the only thing that that they again not really showing properly is that our recovery rate has also gone up to 50% or close to 50% and uh, again the number of tests is indicating number of people tested or number of tests carried out because the same person sometimes is tested twice so who's going to tell us all this right number of tests people who are tested positive the first time before they leave again there's another test carried out now obviously there has to be that is recorded as a test 
So the first time he's positive, next time he's negative, right? So where are you going to record this? I think you're getting the whole point here. We need to ask the right kind of questions to then take different decisions. And then just simply jumping up and down and saying things are not working or things are working, that's called profound knowledge. We need to look at things differently. Now, it's difficult to really talk about this because all these four sciences are interconnected. And But I have to start somewhere. So I'll start with appreciation for a system. Why? Because I'm comfortable doing that, right? Uh, I'll start from that and go to the rest of it. That doesn't mean the rest are less important. No, that's the way I teach it. I mean, when uh, recently, around two years ago, when I went to the United States, I saw there, okay, that some gentleman was talking about this and he began with, with psychology and then he built the rest of it around that. Uh, my my mentor, Dr. Henry Neve, he starts with variation and then he builds everything around it. So, so there's no one way of teaching this. That's why Deming is so special, right? He, he recognized this. So I'll begin with system. Now, what exactly did... W. Edwards Deming defined as a system. He said a system is a network, right? So network means it's nothing linear, but it's more lateral. It's all over the place. So network of, he said, interdependent parts or components that work together to achieve the aim of the system. And he said every system must have an aim. Without an aim, there is no system. So here it is. System is an is a network of interdependent parts or components that work together to achieve the aim of the system. Every system must have an aim. Without an aim, there is no system. Now, the words that he found important were network, interdependence, and aim. Right? And he says, without an aim, there is no system. That means the aim precedes the system. Okay? The aim decides what the system is going to be. Now, when I read this in his book, I realized that here's where the paucity of the English language comes in. He was trying to say something else. He said there should be a purpose for the system. So we can see here what he said was aim, interdependence, and network. But I'll start with aim. What he meant was purpose, that there must be a reason why the system exists. And for organizations, okay, even for an educational organization like Dewey Patil, there will be a purpose, right? And we need we need to unearth that purpose. And because unless we connect to that purpose, we'll never be able to really make a difference to anybody's life as a, as a student, right? Same with companies. I'll give you a case here, right? We're talking about purpose. Take the case of someone like Walt Disney. What was his purpose? Why did he set up the company Walt Disney? To make cartoons, to make some toys, to set up Disneyland. What was the purpose? People hardly know this. He had a simple purpose, and his purpose was, I'll do anything to make a child smile. That, that was his purpose. And when you understand that, then anything that company has done has been working on making children smile. That is their purpose. Whether it is Donald Duck, whether it's Mickey Mouse, or creating Disneyland, right, or Disney World, the whole purpose was to make the child smile. In fact, uh, Disney, before they release films, right, they have this great war room meeting where everybody gets together, right, and um, they see the film, and in that they include theater owners as a part of that entire audience. Uh, sometimes some children, children belonging to the uh, the um, employees of the company of Disney. And they all sit together and they watch a, a run of the film like a like a pre-run, and then they decide whether there is uh, anything anything special that can be added or what needs to be done. I remember there was one of the uh, examples they were giving that there was a movie called Pocahontas, and they were watching it like that. And one of the one of the theater owners he just loved one of the songs there, and he said, "I love this song. Okay, uh, I have an idea. Why don't you set up a a, a, a small little kiosk outside the cinema hall selling the CDs of the of, of the movie where the songs are there and very sure it'll do very well. So all of this comes in, right? Because they they have this purpose. It it should it should make the child smile. If you look at the purpose of Microsoft, of Apple, there's always something higher than what we think it is. So purpose is the first thing, okay, because the purpose decides where the system is going to go. So for companies, 
I can take the case of one Harley Davidson when they were faced with horrible competition from the Japanese and they lost all their market to the Japanese motorcycles like Yamaha and Honda and Kawasaki which had with they barged into America with their motorcycles and then uh, a bunch of uh, the top executives went for a Deming seminar and they were sitting right in front and at that time Deming asked them this this question what business are you in and that man who was sitting there said i had no answer to this man that he said i when Deming asked me what business are you in he had no answer he was shocked all right and he said we went back that day and we asked ourselves all right, are we making motorcycles? What are we doing? And then they realize, no, we're giving the customer a unique experience. And part of that experience is, is riding this motorcycle. And so they went back to the drawing board, redesigned the motorcycle, and they came up with the merchandise and sold it as an experience. And you can see today how do you do a premium motorcycle, but it's an experience riding that bike. So we need to go back and find out our purpose, right? So he said, that's what they said. Second, this word called interdependence, right? Now there are words, interdependent means being independent and dependent at the same time, right? Independent means, well, autonomy. That means every single part of the system in a, in a company, we're having a family of companies working together, but each of them works separately, right? But to get the job done, you need each other. So you're independent and dependent at the same time. Okay, don't forget this. It's like the organs of the human body. Each one grows separately. They're autonomous in that sense. I mean, you have the eyeball, which does not grow at all throughout our life. Okay, you have uh, the um, heart and liver, which keep on growing along with us, right? You have nails and hair, which keep on growing, right? And we got to keep cutting them. There's no end to it. So each one is doing a different job, but to get to, for the body to work, they all work together. There's no better example than the human body. And today we are seeing this as we hear that, I mean, all kinds of theories coming out as to how to counter this virus and all that. I mean, we didn't realize that it was there's so much happening inside our body and all the different parts of the body are working together. I mean, just imagine we are not a bunch of uh, different parts, I mean, different organs. The human body is not a bunch of different organs. It's a, it's an interdependent system. And each one's connected to the other. And sometimes, even today, we're trying to figure out the deep interconnections, right? When people, some people are admitted uh, under COVID-19 are recovering in seven days. Some people are recovering in 14 days. Some people are recovering in 17. And some are not recovering it at all. But how come? We are all people. No, because there are the way the system responds is different. Each one of us is different. And that's the interdependencies that they're learning, that there's so many things that are happening. There are some people who cannot make it because they have complications. And those complications have come because some organs are not working properly. And we didn't even know that. They're getting undergoing treatment and we are letting the person know and letting the person have a comfortable life. But the person that when it when it's attacked by this virus, they don't know what to do. That's interdependence. Same way inside organizations today. Right. When you talk about organizations, we need to understand that this is a system of organizations working together and we should need to understand our interdependencies. We may be independent from one another, but in today's world, it's become even more important because we are geographically apart. I mean, to make the iPhone, right, there are a thousand components being flown in from 38 different countries into China. Simple stuff. All right. And how do they manage it? Well, they understand the importance of having an integrated dynamic system. And in the dynamics, you can see all these things happen with respect to time. Things keep changing. So we need to look at things differently. Even here, I remember walking into uh, DY Patel College of Engineering Mechanical Department, right, for the for the, for the, uh, the, the competition, okay, that the robotic, uh, the, your... Uh, the car competition where you're making and designing a car and they say we are improving the efficiency we're making it faster and where is this when i asked where the components coming from they gave me a list of at least 20 30 people from where they got the components they say this we got from juna bazaar well that car is not a bunch of components it's a system and we see we have to see how they interact together and they're interdependent right so we talk about interdependence here now network means that there's a physical connection all right amongst all of these there is the so-called connection when they work together, but there's also a physical connection here, right? Now, in network, when you talk about 
the physical connection here i'll give you a simple example right if you to ask a child please draw a tree well they will draw something like this and even if i have to ask you to draw a tree let's be clear you also draw something like this okay so when you say that this tree is like this there's something that is missing obviously because we have drawn what we see we see the trunk the leaves the bark etc but we don't see the roots and the roots go deeper into the ground than the tree grows above the ground and underground these roots entwine and join and become one they may be different trees which are physically apart so there could be a tree here and a tree here but underground their roots are connected right and we only see the trees and not the roots now this is what has led to people misunderstanding how the japanese operate we've always looked at them as fierce competitors no their roots are interconnected in fact even those of us who come from uh, villages okay most of us have our native places in villages when we go back to our village homes and then we see the the angan the the garden over there the plants are there and the maribu the the gardener comes and he's just you know throwing water at some places why because underground he doesn't have to go throughout the whole garden watering the plants he waters some part of it and he knows that underground these plants are connected he knows we tell him sometimes are kaka oh the pani dalo na he says nahi mil jayega they know that they share underground you in fact you can try this test at home you know you can take a potted plant and pour a bucket of water into it you'll find up to sometime the excess water is taken out that's why we keep an extra plate under the under the pot okay why is that because nature does not take more than it needs that's all the plant needs and the rest they pass on to someone else if there's another tree there they pass on the water to that person right but we don't see that similarly here in japan all of the companies work together right now i am seeing here okay i mean when uh, when we have to supply quinine okay to america and we are the largest producer of these generic drugs in the world and that lady who came here to india from uh, i think from the world health organizations and she she was one miss scotland patricia scotland and she made a statement she said we are very intrigued to know how india is really ramping up because they managed to send the the tablets to just about everybody okay in, in many countries in the world and how did they do that because the different pharmaceutical companies decided to work together now this nobody will tell us right and you can see now how how we ramped up production of ppe kits from 2 lakh pieces per annum to 2 lakh pieces per day same with the number of tests being carried out in india when we started around march when they were testing it was 500 tests being carried out per day today it's 1 lakh 40000 tests per day but has anybody imagined the kind of interdependent network that is operating and making this happen now we start looking at profound knowledge right we are seeing things differently and when we see things differently we will ask different questions so as engineers we need to be proud of the fact that these companies who are setting up manufacturing assembling and doing these things so that we can we have a great system at work the whole healthcare system is being really tested but we are holding up right we are really holding up we are uh, uh, dynamically responding to the need here right so this is with these three words here that is aim interdependence and network okay and network we can see that these are interconnected but these read really rise to properties of the system and let's look at them one by one okay first one we said here aim and the pre aim decides this and the aim should be for components to gain over the long term this was like a human body all of them work together and the aim here for us our purpose in life is to to sustain our life okay and of course as an organization is to make life better for everyone just like we saw in um for disney i want to make a child smile in uh, harley davidson in apple they all of these have higher purposes and that's what drives them forward but let's come to some of the parts of system one of the most important thing in a system cause and effect are not closely related in either time or space that means what decisions we take right now their effects are felt in another in another place at another time okay this 
this particular talk that you're having right now okay i hope you take back something and then the impact can be felt maybe maybe one and a half years later when actually industry 4.0 starts taking shape right? that we need to manage differently that we have everything yes the whole system is uh, the uh, the 5g is there and the machines are also having the information but there's something wrong why is it that they're taking wrong decisions well maybe we didn't construct it properly we need to ask the correct questions right so the whatever actions we take today their effect is felt at another time at another place but there's also a corollary to this what we are seeing in front of our eyes its origin is at another time at another place okay we need to understand that time and space right we're saying that time plays a very important role in systems thinking right so we need and remember the word dynamic i mean today when you're talking about environmental changes and all that yeah some people were saying that because of this lockdown everywhere all over the world okay that the earth is repairing itself and we seen here yeah, i think when there were so many cases where we we saw like in chandigarh from finally they could see the 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 himalayan ranges which was not visible for the last 37 years or 27 years because of the pollution that had created i mean you all have seen we have been witness to all of this so what harm we are causing we don't realize and these are these 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 happen so gradually that we we one day just descends on us oh my god this is this has happened all right so we need to look at things differently we need to see that there's a time and space element that comes in second you can see that disconnected events turning turning out to be quite the opposite i mean one thing happens in one part of the world another thing happens in another part of the world and we say that this is in that place this is in this place therefore they're not no no they're connected and as engineers yes when we start uh, carrying out experiments on processes on on equipment simple stuff all right and we say here yeah, giving an example okay when we are driving the car and all of us engineers we know that uh, i mean that's what we've been taught okay when you're driving a car and uh, driving the car against gravity okay when going up you know ghat bolte hain ghat chadtana or when going up the ghat we are told that you know there's a full uh, the strain on the engine so please uh, turn off the ac and roll down the windows right and so as a good practice we do that but does that mean that the car cannot run with the ac on of course it can run with the ac on it bloody hell has been designed to do that right but then what happens here if you run the car with the ac on that strain on the engine is high now a person who understands the that these two things are connected will take certain decisions and what is that okay i drove for those 17 kilometers of the ghat with the ac on and so the engine has undergone even more stress than it normally does so what i will do is when i come back home the very next day i'll take the car to the service station and say that yesterday for around 17 kilometers i drove the car with the ac on all right i think you should do a maintenance on that now this is where profound knowledge comes in you won't wait till every 6 months i'm giving the car for servicing you will not you will see that because you took some decision not now but later on the car may feel the strain and somewhere it's going to give way third is outputs are the result of a huge amount of inputs it's not one thing i mean you can't say that this caused that that's the stupidest thing you can ever say i mean i'll give you an example here you're driving a uh, riding a motorcycle all right and then you're driving on a road and you go into a a, a pothole khadda and next thing your clutch wire is broken and then you just take it to the mechanic thankfully there's a mechanic nearby you take it there and say your clutch wire lagao and he says ha ha lagata hu lagata and he starts repairing and then you say and then he says that kya ho gaya ye nahi kya useless ek khadde mein gaya aur toot gaya and you say that kya aajkal kaise banate hai ek khadda mein gaya to aise clutch wire toot gaya and he says nahi saab you see and he shows you the wire and he says see ghis gaya all right and this is because of your your habit of riding the clutch and when did that habit develop that habit developed years ago when you were a young teenager are trying to ride the bike and you unfortunately develop that habit and that's why now when you ride the bike the clutch wire breaks that it broke at that point in time it doesn't mean that that caused it right so our outputs are a result of a huge amount of inputs one thing does not cause it it may precipitate at that point in time but if you're if you're here you'll see things different fourth is synergy what do you mean by synergy synergy is composed of these two words right you have synchronous energy right so synergy synchronous energy but in, in if you have to really explain this simply 
synchronous energy. Where they say here you can't, it's not a linear equation. For example, in a synergistic relationship, 1 plus 1 is not equal to 2. It's anything from 3 to infinity. Which means that it's not a summation of all the parts working together. Different parts of a system are not additive. They are interdependent. And what we get is something totally different. You can't add them up and put it. But conversely also, you can't understand a system by breaking it up into its components and studying the properties of the components separately and saying when you add it all together, you get a finished system. That's not how it works. Okay. For example, let's, let's try to understand this. Water. Water is composed of hydrogen and oxygen. You cannot understand the properties of water by breaking it up into hydrogen and oxygen and studying the properties of hydrogen and oxygen separately and then saying this together will give us water, the property. You'll make a big mistake. Let, let's try doing that. Okay, break it up. Hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, hydrogen, highly inflammable gas, catches fire very quickly. Oxygen feeds fire. But when you put them together, it gives you something that quenches fire. Wow. Can you explain this from a mathematical equation? You cannot. That's called synergy. All right, that's synergy. Right? Same with sugar. It's a hydrocarbon. Try tasting hydrogen. Try tasting carbon. But put them together and see what you get. You get something totally different. So you can't understand a system. Same way with organizations. Okay, And especially in Industry 4.0, where the interconnections are going to be so deep right? You can't understand the whole system by breaking it up into small organizations and managing them separately. No, guys, that's not how it works. These are synergistic relationships. Okay, same with teams, same with people. That's why in when you watch the game of cricket, I don't like it that one person gets man of the match award. Why? What about the rest? What are they doing? They were doing nothing. And ask a team, they'll also be a synergy. I'll give you a case here. Years and years ago, the very, very famous uh, cricketer by the name Vijay Hazare, I think if you go back and check, and once upon a time, Ranji Trophy was the thing and the big competition. And that time, Vijay Hazare played for Baroda. Okay. And uh, he was, I think, he was the captain of the team at that time. Now, he had this uh, they had great comparison between another great player, Vijay Merchant. Now, there was this one Ranji Trophy season where literally they were chasing each other. All right. Uh, Vijay Merchant made a century, then Vijay Azare made one century, then Vijay Azare in the next match made a double century, then Vijay Merchant made, you know, 250 not out. And so things were going on like this. And then the great challenge was when the two met face to face, right? And this was, uh, uh, I think, Mumbai versus Baroda uh, Holkar. Uh, I can't really remember what it was. But yeah, it was Mumbai versus Baroda. And in that, I think. Uh, Vijay Merchant had just gone on another double century or something, and they made 400 something. And then Baroda started playing, and they were in a horrible state. They reached the score of 33 for 5 when Vijay Hazare walked into bat. And from 33 for 5, he took the team score to 387. So do the mathematics here 33 to 387. That means 344 runs were added after he joined, uh, he came into the field. But out of those 344 runs, he made 309 runs. All right. And then when he finally became out, it was one, the whole audience, in fact, the whole Mumbai team was clapping as he, as he left. He was the last man to become out. 309 out of 387. One man taking uh, everything on his shoulders. Okay. So when he was out and then later on, when they asked him that, how do you feel when you make that 309, you, you're one man army making all alone? He said, what nonsense. If that runner on the other end didn't take any runs, I would have not got any runs. Now, this is synergy right and i remember just now david warner saying something like this that steve smith is a good batsman because i exist at number one i mean i'm the opener and because i make it easier for him right and so these are things that people don't understand in fact even when akash chopra we don't know him well but we know that in that series against australia he was the calming effect on virendra sehwag and everybody remembers virendra sehwag went crazy in that series but they don't remember that it was Akash Chopra who was there, who was actually blunting the new ball. Right? So this is synergy. Right? We can't. And so same, same in, in systems also these things exist. Right? So that was the first part in systems thinking. You can see here that we are, as engineers, we are very interested in the physical layout and the processes. But we now have to look at things differently. We need to look at 
the patterns, the interrelationships, and of course, the purpose of the system. So that is the important bit here. So this is with systems thinking. Now, let's go to the next aspect, okay, of systems thinking, right? Which is, well, understanding of variation. Now, I just explained in very briefly what you mean by that. But this whole understanding of variation is that when a system, when you have so many dynamic components working together and all of them are changing with time and their interdependencies, can you imagine the output that we're getting will always keep on fluctuating. It'll never be a straight line. If you draw a graph, it won't be a straight line. It'll keep on fluctuating. We need to understand that. Now, Deming said there are two kinds of variation that exist. One he called as common cause variation. Variation that occurs in a system when it is left alone and left to oscillate by itself. Common cause variation. Okay. And the tool that was created, right, I would, I would call it as a graphical representation, it was called as a control chart. Now, I don't like the word control chart. That is a wrong term. Okay. Uh, I'd rather use the word process behavior chart because it explains how a process, I mean, how a process behaves. So as long as it's oscillating within limits, okay, we say it's pretty fine. It's only when it crosses a limit, then we say that something has acted on the system. It's a simple thing. Okay, like take the case of you going to from home to college every day. Okay, when you start driving and you reach college, you'll find that there is an average time, but there are limits, right? And when you leave at different times, you get different limits. Okay, so that is exactly what happens. And you see that there is common cause variation and there's special cause variation. You can't react to every single number. We react only to the special cases that happen. Much like what I explained right now to you, okay, that when I'm doing this COVID-19 graphs and all that, much of it lies within limits, but then you only look out for those cases where the points have crossed the limits, right? So that's exactly how we manage here. So he said, when you understand that variation, you will take different decisions based on whether the variation is normal or abnormal. If it is normal variation, you won't bother much. You, you want to change the system itself. But when there's abnormal variation, when it crosses limits, that's when you stop and ask the question, what happened here? And you take some localized action to make that happen in a much better way, right? So that's variation. And this is the outcome of any system, whether it's manufacturing, okay? Uh, especially when it's non-manufacturing, I find that even more challenging, okay? So when I was drawing control charts for COVID-19 data, even that, um, I mean, because I was really perturbed. Even now I get very, very upset when I see the media, the way they report the cases or cases are going up. But when you draw a graph, of the percentages, it's way it's it's very stable and within limits. Yes, these last 15 days have been different because the whole approach was that we'll mark out containment and non-containment zones, and we will do testing only in containment zones. In non-containment zones, we will just do sampling, and in that sampling and need-to basis, the cases are very less, and here the cases are very high. So if you average it out, it's coming to five percent. But if you do it separately, in containment zones, it's around seven to eight percent. And in non-containment zones, it's not even 1%. So if you put it together, you get, well, 5%. So uh, coming to this, we need to see this difference. We need to understand these differences, and that comes from understanding variation. And you need to see here that in the system, you have variation, and variation has to be managed. So even when we set up these Industry 4.0, where the, the machines will be talking to each other, I think we need to make the machines understand or program something into them so that they tackle only special variation and not the common cause. The common cause is different, okay? If you can't keep reacting to every number, we react only when there is something special. Now, in this, when you see here that there is so many complications and in understanding variation, there's a common cause and a special cause. Well, how do we analyze this? How do we look at this? And that's where we come to what is called as understanding a theory of knowledge. Right now, whenever people hear the word theory, the first word that comes, okay. I mean, these are engineers here, so we all say theory is opposite of practice, right? I mean, I don't know what to say here. Deming said something else, he said, theory is not the opposite of practice. First of all, what is theory? 
let's take his his definition he said theory is a statement that relates some cause to some effect it fits without fail of the observations of the past and helps us predict the future with the risk of being wrong right so let's break this up one theory is a statement that relates some cause to some effect so you write down when i do this i get this okay it fits without fail all the observations of the past every time i did this i got that right it helps you predict the future in the future when i do this i might get that with the risk of being wrong because i use the word might now let's explain this through a small example okay uh there's a small child who's watching his father go to work every day right and the father goes to work uh on a scooter right i'm talking about years ago say bajaj scooter whatever okay chetak yeah now chetak has gone electronic so good to see that right but um and uh, just like all children okay five years six years old he's watching his father he comes to the balcony every morning and when his father starts the scooter he says bye 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 and the father goes away one day the this child there's a question that comes into his head how does the scooter start right so he decides to observe because every time he goes and asks his parents as with bada ho ke sikhoge when you grow up you learn so he he comes there he goes to the balcony and he starts writing down everything that he sees okay my father brought the scooter out of the garage put it on the stand took the bag out of his shoulder put it on the handlebar and some big ritual took place and then this and the scooter started right so he started writing this down every day and suddenly so there's a pattern that emerged out of this right unless he kicks the lever over there the scooter doesn't start so he writes down his first theory of knowledge and what is that kick is equal to start okay when you kick the lever scooter starts and he tries to test this so one day he sits inside the hall he doesn't come to the balcony only and from there he hears the kicking and he goes to his mother and says now the scooter is going to start and then the scooter starts so the theory can't be wrong when i kick this lever the scooter starts excellent very good okay now he decides to test the theory himself so one day when nobody is at home he goes to the scooter in the garage and he gives the lever a mighty kick and nothing happens again he kicks nothing happens again he kicks nothing happens he said but then when my daddy was kicking it was happening so he said what do i do then he does the same thing what his daddy does he goes and gets the bag puts it on his shoulder takes off the bag puts it on the handlebar and then he does all the ritual his daddy does and kicks his lever and the scooter doesn't start ye kya ho raha hai he said maybe i observed wrong so the next day again in the balcony is looking at everything his father is doing there is nothing special but on the second or third day he notices something wait he was inserting something over there near the handle underneath the handle and turning a turning something what what is that and the next day he sees there is a key and the key is being put in the slot and turned and then he kicks the lever and then the scooter starts and he says oh my god new theory key plus kick is equal to start but he said last time mera popot hua tha let me check this out so he goes to the garage when nobody is there at home he takes the key puts it to the slot turns it kicks the lever and the scooter starts there is no better theory than this key plus kick is in the start till one day he hears kicking 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 and he is wondering why the scooter is not starting and he goes to the balcony and sees father kicking kicking and then he says shayad but they said ab aapko sikhata hai of course gumaya the why is the scooter not starting i don't know so they take the scooter to a neighbor who is a little elder person right and tell him that uh, the scooter is not starting right so the elder person says okay he does something which totally totally baffles the kid he, he takes the scooter and runs with it then he jumps on it and jerks it into motion and the scooter starts and his whole theory of key plus kick pura how it chala gaya so he goes to his father and says what the hell happened so his father says when you grow up you learn so this poor kid is just sitting over there and wondering how this scooter started for a long time he doesn't learn this till he learns he comes to seventh standard when he is 12 years old and the one day in the class the teacher is teaching the subject general science and the topic is newton's laws of motion right now when he uh, newton's laws of motion and all of us learned but what did he learn no, no. we were given this great information what is that all of us know this fact right body continues to be in a state of rest or motion till something disturbs it from the outside uh, 
rate of change of momentum is equal to force and to every action there is equal and opposite reaction all this is information not knowledge right children are very well informed knowledgeable there is difference Right, and this was wrong. But that information, one of those sentences, all the information, but one of those sentences turned into the rate of change. So, or running with the scooter, that there is a rate of change. This was making the scooter start. Right? Now you can see what's happening. Same scooter, but the understanding is changing. Right? The theory is changing, and then came the fact that he inherited the scooter one day, and he started using it. And every time he had a problem, he used to take, you know, he used to run with the scooter and start. Till one day, even that did not make the scooter start. Then desperation, he went and then he they go came here. The mechanic went underneath the scooter and came out with spark plug and said, "They go, how much damage has been done? Cleans it, puts it back into." Place and kicks the lever and the scooter starts. Now, nice long theory. When I run with that scooter or I kick that lever, there's a rate of change momentum which is equal to force. The force ignites the spark. The spark ignites the fuel and the scooter scooter starts. Now, we all know engineers. Yeah, that's not how it happens. But if you're listening carefully, you must have realized that every time this child was proven wrong, he learned something new. All right. and he he was proven wrong because he had a theory theory is not the opposite of practice theory is a guide to better practice and this is what was happening with this child he was asking questions he was building a theory he was experimenting he was exploring he was confirming he was verifying then he was acting and asking new questions new questions led to new improvement and then the whole thing repeat and repeat and repeat and every time his questions were different every time his learning was different which means when he was proven wrong he learned more all right this system of learning all of us are born with right we are all born with this i mean take a 2 year old child that 2 year old child has so many questions but of course we stop asking questions why because our parents don't answer they say jab tum bade ho jaoge you will learn all right when you go to school and then When 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 the teacher says water boils at hundred degrees centigrade and then he says so what's so great and they said did anybody else ask anything so you stop asking when you go to work all right where the work where the when you say sir ये ये machine ऐसे क्यों चलता है हम ये उनको सिखा रहे क्या तू so you stop asking questions no questions no theory no theory no learning so all of us are born with this we need we as teachers have to ignite all of this ability of a student to start questioning again and let we have to help them build their own theories there are some standard theories which we can use as guidelines but let them think differently all right and that's why though all of us are born with the system of learning each one of us learns differently some learn by watching some learn by doing some learn by reading some learn by writing for some people one word is enough when you say something they understand one person say when you for some people you repeat the same thing 12 times the 13th time you say they say i mean now i understood and is this different is this wrong we are all different from one another and that's what deming said if you want to get the best out of a person you need to understand the learning process of that person and when you understand the learning process of that person and then when you put that person on the right job you'll have to stop that man from learning and that is called understanding psychology understanding psychology is not traditional way of doing things understanding psychology is understanding the learning process of a person and when you understand the learning process of a person and put that person on the right job then that person starts flowering you have to stop that person from working the reason why i like our education system i will never say that change it i like it they say that ye kokam patti karna hai no 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 there were some subjects which you had to learn by heart there were some subjects where you had to be imaginative there were some subjects where you had to relate theories 
each one is different there are some people who are amazing at retaining and have a fantastic memory we need those people we need to identify those children there are some children who are very good at relating one to another we need those we need them to work together why is it the problem is we as teachers have gone and compared one with the other oh memory is greater than imagination imagination is greater than memory what nonsense we are not looking at it as a system and we need to tell them that these are your strengths every child should be told that these are your strengths and you can't do everything alone you have to work together that is system that is where variation comes in that is where theories of how people how you, how do you put this all together managing organizations in the future is going to be dependent on these things you can't be good at one thing but as a manager when you go to that level you need to find that strength and then put that person in the right way and teach people to work together the total knowledge in any field is not it is impossible to be found in one person we need people to work together that is about systems thinking it is not just about i mean seeing things in isolation and i think that's what's happened recently i heard one of the psychologists talk here and he said throughout their lives the children are taught to compete with one another in school and in college and then when they get into work they're told to work with someone else in cooperative way what nonsense are you talking it will never happen and that's why deming made a statement he said cooperation gives you better results than competition it is natural for people to work together we should let them work together and each one has their own strengths right and when he said people matter because if people are the only living parts of a system as my boss said can you do anything with with without any people i mean today without any of the migrant workers and all the top people who are running their companies they say we want them back i need people and each one is good at something you can't compare this is better than that everyone has their place and that is a system we are interdependent all right and when you're talking about the difference the difference is not much it's about variation there are things that are common and things that are special the commonality will be the purpose that binds everyone together if we understand this in the future that is how managing organizations in industry 4.0 is going to be different all, all these companies are based in different parts of the world the working culture is different the way people uh, look at work is different the way people look at products is different the way people look at life is different right and you can't say this is better than that there are some things which we are good at in this part of the world everyone knows that india and indians are research based we love to do research all right and that is why most of the people in the top positions in research organizations in the us are all indians right but then the americans themselves are very hard working we can't match them on their efficiencies so why can't we bring all of this together all right and become one big big sort of nation but anyway this is just going beyond all borders but i'm saying that if you can't do it at a very national level you can do it at an organizational level so this is what i believe is the future there is no one best way of doing it the what is best for you has to be determined and this is only a method of choosing that best of arriving at that best we need to understand a holistic view we need to understand that things will not be the same that variation will exist we need to understand that that we need to know how and why things work why did why was this example of success that exists you can't copy somebody else you have to find out why that is the theory as they say if a person knows how he always gets a job but if a person knows why he always is the boss you need to figure out why it's not just how but why and then of course we're talking about putting the right people in the right place now this is precisely what i wanted to talk about in our talk here okay uh, uh i think i'm more or less covered what i wanted to say because today industry 4.0 we are we are like i said standing at the doorstep of that if if not inside it and we have to think differently and this difference in thinking comes from profound knowledge people talk about yes new technologies and all that but i think the way to manage these technologies is much more important than the technology itself and that's why we need this different way of looking at things all right so uh i think we're 
coming close to whatever i uh, to say i'm willing to have a few questions if you can throw that at me well uh, thanks a lot sir uh, i request all the participants uh, to please post your questions we'll uh, be beginning with the question and answering session sir we have one question uh, by mr mahesh yeah. shukla okay how system will adapt to the changes in industry 4.0 how system will adapt okay that depends on uh, i told you that we need to study systems differently okay that means we need to right um, uh, and it's not just one thing i'll give an example here okay when Years ago, I'm talking about say around seven, eight years ago, ten, twelve years ago, right? Suddenly, uh, University of Pune decided that everything, all the uh, the tests, the exams will be conducted, engineering exams will be conducted online, right? But nobody looked at the system that needed to be put into place. Good idea, right? So, what what needed to be put into place was one, the bandwidth, which I don't think existed the way we have today. Second, the the machines themselves, and third is how are we going to transfer this into a digital format? Are we going to scan it and put it there? Are we putting it into Excel? Are we how are we going to do that, right? Because we all knew what happened at that time, where where the students had to report at the place at a certain time slot, and then when they started answering, suddenly the system collapsed, and then it had to start all over again, and then the new fresh set of questions were coming in. They were being chosen randomly, but nobody looked at it as a system. They looked at it in isolation. Okay, so adapting means you need to study the system first. and we need to study the all the surrounding just about everything so i told you interdependent is a word here all right and that's being independent and dependent so you start with the autonomy that is each of these separately but how do they work together and then you decide i can't say that there is one ram ban to this you have to study and it's dynamic the word was dynamic which i used it keeps changing all the time and we need to keep changing i mean uh, when you look at this right every time you can't sit back and say that i've attained it you can never say that because it keeps changing so you can see how difficult this is right uh, we have to keep our eyes and ears open because what used to be uh, uh, normal has become you know i mean what used to be special has becomes normal over a period of time right so adaptation Then is a question of time and space, and we need to understand that properly. So I, I don't think anybody can sit back now, since we are uh, we are getting into industry 4.0, and say that this is the solution. And the day you realize that coming to work every day will become a challenge. I hope I've answered the, the question. There is no one answer to this. It will not be dynamic and not static. As you never you never learn to adapt. uh i hope mahesh uh, sir has answered your question sir in connection to the same question uh, mi uh, mr milind mari has asked uh, evaluation of such system how are we uh, how are we going to evaluate such system my question my answer to that is if you have to really evaluate and maybe you're not doing well <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> and just saying here um not everything can be converted into numbers that's what i said here okay when we started right so evaluation would be the extent to which the purpose is being met rather than the separate numbers because we've seen okay sometimes i hope you never get to see the site but many of us are of that age of you know some patients in the icu where everything is normal okay blood pressure is normal and pulse rate is normal and oxygen saturation is 100% but still the person is not they have these isolated measures but are they serving the purpose right so i think we should have a different way of looking at things i mean finally the proof of the pudding is in the eating so uh, if i have to say evaluate i think it will be only the purpose the extent to which purpose is being met of any system of uh, if you are either in a company making a product okay uh, delivering a service rendering a service you can't just sit back you have to keep keep on probing and saying that okay i i expected this to happen did this happen and then you find that gap then get into the reasons for that gap 
all right and always remember that it can't be isolated when you find one reason you go deeper and find a host of reasons and see how they're all interconnected the problem today is people find reasons and treat with the, you know treat them i so that should change okay i mean just like the corona example that i gave you each one is looking at things in isolation you look at a number in isolation today's cases are over 9000 are baba 1000 out of what and what do i need to do i can't do anything about it okay when you're saying here that uh, fatalities okay the number of people dying from corona and all that but right now let me tell you in india it's 2.82% okay and if you take that on the number of people uh, cases being contested being contested now this is number of positive cases which is 226000 then 6000 have, have have not made it which means it's around uh, 2.8% but if you take that on number of people tested is 0.14% so people are you know looking but then can i control that i can't i need to find out what the reasons are and then try to well that's a medical thing i i can't as a statistician say that this is the reason i can't do that right so i don't think there is uh, i mean you can evaluate in that sense the number is only giving you guideline eventually what action you take should meet the intended purpose i think that's more important thank you sir i hope uh, milin sir that answers your question uh, so next question is uh, sir could you please uh, again I, i i think sir you have answered this question but uh, uh, could you please clarify the term epistemology okay epistemology is the science of learning all of us have different speed of learning different different way of learning it is about understanding that and i think as teachers as professors we need to spend some time doing that with the children they need that okay uh, uh, i made a, a statement i said that you can't compare one with another so the reason why i like our education system and i hope it doesn't change because we were not and saying oh this is useless our education system is useless I mean, it's not, okay the way it was designed i said history geography was testing your memory retaining capacity um we had science which re, re, you know re, tested your reasoning capacity mathematics which tested your expression capacity all right then you had the languages all right where you needed the 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 thinking the imagination that came in through learning literature and things like this all of these are important point here is some people is are good at literature some people are good at uh, mathematics some people are good at science some people are good at history geography the problem we've done is we've compared that we should not compare we should keep them all separate and that is what epistemology says the learning systems of everyone are different and uh, as a manager he said okay as as um, a teacher also we need to combine this that's why when we do project work together each one does something different somebody is the is the data gatherer because he's amazing in that somebody is 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 the man he draws everything and says this is what the what the car is going to look like okay somebody is the practical guy who breaks it down and says like these are the components so we need that everyone everyone doesn't everything is the same organizations and we got to be needing these people in the right place right so epistemology of understanding that that all, all of us are different and all of us have different uh, ways and speeds of learning it is a way of of, of discovering that okay so i think we should go back to our schools not change the system but change the way we the results that we see okay when a child is is not able to memorize great don't judge that child but that child could be good at something else and then you know when we write the report card or something i think we should give equal weightage to everything and say that wow this is this is great this child is good at this so please focus on that and the grading and all that we can't evaluate Evaluate like as said here. That one is better related to this epistemology, this science of learning. This way of learning. So okay, we'll have have engineering. We also need engineering. There are we need. Okay, I mean besides the knowing all of the mechanical stuff and all. I mean because all of the theory behind it, but also. putting it all together i mean you had someone like an elon musk who came up with ideas right it's not he didn't even start right and only uh, studied engineering the way we do it here in india and he often often says that that the engineering sciences are so different right and he knew the idea of a tesla but 
the whole production, um, the way of making the Tesla and all of that, he had to rely on someone like a General Motors to make out the entire, you know, the entire process. So I hope I'm making a point here. Okay, the epistemology is about understanding the learning processes. Thank you, sir. Sir, we have a lot of questions, but uh, due to time constraint, I guess we cannot take <laughs> all of them. <laughs> and uh, we would really love to uh, talk to you uh, for endless time, sir. It was a really wonderful session. So uh, I, uh, I request all the, uh, I, I'll tell all the participants uh, that due to time constraint, we are not able to take all your questions. Uh, they could mail it. You could mail thing. it, I think, sir, as my yes. idea. I'll mail you all the questions, sir. And, uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, once the session is over, and uh, with this, I would like to uh, deliver a vote of thanks. Uh, it was a great pleasure, sir, to have you with us, and it was really a wonderful session. Uh, we have, uh, we have, uh, I, uh, initially we have, uh, haven't heard of these words, uh, Deming's philosophy. We, we didn't, we were not aware of all these terms and the science which are a part of uh, Deming's philosophy. I would like to, in short, uh, tell all the participants about it. Uh, we have seen uh, Dr. Deming's thinking. Uh, the sciences which are involved in Dr. Deming's thinking are integrated dynamic systems, then people matter. People matter, uh, the, the very important part Sir has told us, uh, that people are, people are an important part of any system. Uh, the next is numbers with meaning, and the last term Sir told was epistemology. And I'm very happy, Sir, uh, that uh, you are one of the uh, very few people uh, who think uh, the syllabus is very good. And, uh, <laughs> There is a lot of myth and there is a lot of misunderstanding yeah. among the students also. Yes, I, I, the still feel, I still feel our Indian education system is very good. We should not dilute yes. it by copying something right. from the West. We should not. Right. But I think some people have uh, misunderstood it. Some students have also <laughs> misunderstood it. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for sparing your valuable time. And uh, I really, really uh, loved listening to you. And uh, listening to your talks and uh, listening the way uh, you speak, sir, I think uh, you have read a lot of good books also. <laughs> <laughs> so I would suggest, I would request you, I would request you, if you have any uh, uh, good books to read, please let us know uh, the names of the books. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. Okay. And there uh, is it was, there is, yes, yes. Yeah. There, there is one session. author, you know. Yes. Sir. There's one author, I think, as engineers, uh, uh, he's he's a physicist, but he's written some fantastic books. Okay, um, right. this is a gentleman by the name Frit Joff Capra. Okay, uh, F R I T J O F C A P R A. Frit Joff Capra. Frit so Joff if you Cap can, yeah, Frit Joff. If you can read his books, okay, uh, they are fantastic. Okay, so and he's given some very good ways of looking at things. You could begin there and then, of course, one, one thing leads to another, as they say. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you very much, sir, again. And thank you very much on be uh, behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department for sparing your uh, really valuable time with us and delivery, uh, delivering such a wonderful session. We hope in future, if we get a chance, you'll be definitely available for us, sir. Oh, yes. Divine party. Divine party. Thank you very much, all the participants also for listening so patiently and definitely we will answer all your questions uh, once the session is over. Thanks a lot, sir. With this, uh, I declare that uh, today's uh, first session is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. हाँ हेलो राजेश स्ट्रीमिंग स्टॉप के लिए चालू लिख दे सत्या हो सर चालू लिख दे स्टॉप कर दे 